gentlemen, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, March 10, 2014. Uh, the first matter on the agenda is the approval of minutes for a regular board meeting of February 24, 2014. Can I get a motion? So moved. Moved second. by Betsy, second by Pat. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, next matter on the agenda. Uh, we have already sitting at our table uh, Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield. Kathy Donovan is here on, on their behalf. Kathy, the floor is yours if you want to say okay. a few words. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Kathy Donovan, and I'm a director of the Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield. Our organization was formed in 1960, and over the past 54 years, TSF of Wakefield, formerly known as CSF of Wakefield, has helped more than 8,500 Wakefield students attain a higher education. <coughs> Last year, $435,000 was awarded to Wakefield full-time students of all ages, increasing the total awarded since 1960 to over $10.3 million. Some of you have attended our annual fall golf tournament, winter dinner dance, or jazz brunch, and just recently, a very successful trivia team challenge. On Saturday, March 22nd, we will hold our 34th annual phonathon. Last year, we raised over $49,000 from the phonathon, and this was instrumental in allowing us to award $435,000 in scholarships last year to two, 309 students, and we hope to increase that number this year. I would like to introduce Maggie Scanlon, the student president of TSF, who will talk a little bit more about the upcoming phonathon. Thank you, Mrs. Donovan. I'm Maggie Scanlon, and I'm the current student director president of the Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield. And before I begin, I would like to ask the other student directors who are with me tonight to introduce themselves. All right, I'm Will Shea. I'm a freshman. My name is Bridget Scanlon. I'm a freshman. Um, one week from this Saturday, on March 22nd, we expect to have between 50 and 100 high school students on hand for the 34th annual TSF Phonathon. For the fourth consecutive year, we will be conducting our Phonathon at the AmeriCall Civic Center. We plan to call as many Wakefield residents as we can between the hours of noon and 4 p.m. on that Saturday. We hope that everyone will respond favorably to our most important fundraiser of the entire year. We hope, to, we hope we are able to surpass the $49,267 that we raised at last year's phonathon. On behalf of the Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield, we would like the Board of Selectmen to endorse the 34th, 34th annual phonathon, and we also ask that you please designate the week of March 16th through March 22nd as the Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield phonathon week in Wakefield. Thank you. Thank you. So before I read the proclamation, I um, just want to open it up for comments. Anybody, Pat? Yeah. Well, congratulations to you kids. And the, uh, <clears throat> the CSF has been a fantastic organization, funding several kids' um, scholarships every year. So congratulations. And Maggie, congratulations. Thank I'm very you. proud of you. I'm sure your folks are very proud of you, too. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Good question. If people know they're going to be out from noon to four, is the way to donate online? There is, if you go to the website, um, okay. I think it's tsfofwakefield.org, but okay. you can Google it. Um, also, in the light build um, came envelopes, Great. and so they can do that before the phonathon as well. Thank you. Yep. That's it. I, I was going to ask the same thing, actually, uh, and uh, but I would say something that I said many, many years ago uh, when I was giving out diplomas at the high school when I was on the school committee. And education is something that no one can ever take from you. And I think it's a wonderful uh, thing that your organization, the CSF, is providing for the students in Wakefield, giving them an opportunity to have an education. And I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. So congratulations, and I hope you break the bank this year. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Good. All right, so I'm just going to take a quick second to read a portion of this resolution. Uh, now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Wakefield, in meeting assembled on Monday, March 10, 2014, does hereby endorse and support the efforts of the Scholarship Foundation of Wakefield, Inc., by endorsing its annual Dollars for Scholars phonathon on Saturday, March 22, 2014, and does designate the week of March 16 <coughs> through the 22nd, 2014, as Dollars for Scholars Week in Wakefield. And we urge all citizens of the town to cooperate in this campaign. So I just want to hand this to you. And Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
for coming. Thank, thanks for your time. Thank Thank you. Appreciate it. Check, please. Next matter on the agenda, we're going to have public participation. Uh, first person on the agenda is Bob Mitchell, 6 Baldwin Street. Bob, be before you start, uh, so just uh, briefly, the rules, the rules of our public participation, we allow you three minutes uh, to state whatever you want to state. There's no interaction between us and you as the participant. Um, we could increase the minutes uh, to uh, an additional two minutes, which would be a total of five by two-thirds vote of the board. Okay. okay? Okay. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> we'll move to the procedures. Again, uh, Bob Mitchell, 6 Baldwin Street. Uh, first, I wanted to thank the uh, selectmen this, uh, for agreeing to put uh, Article 1 that was passed at special town meeting uh, by 150 voters for uh, putting that article on the April 1st uh, ballot to be shared with the uh, state senate race vacated by uh, Kathy Clark. Uh, we collected petitions, although 150 voted to support it at town meeting, we collected uh, twice that amount as petitioners. Uh, I represent the Stop Town Land Giveaway Ballot Committee. We are registered with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and are held under those laws, fiduciary responsibilities and so forth. So. Uh, also, our Verizon email account, Facebook, lawn signs, and checking account all share the same name. I want to again thank you for hosting what I presume is going to be the possibility of an educational seminar for, I'm presuming that's a possibility, uh, hosting an educational seminar related to discussions around the April 1st uh, petition question. As my, my presumptions, we'll find out. Uh, and just briefly, if that is true, if you do discuss that and do host the forum, uh, representing the committee and the petitioners, if such a forum is held, we request a consideration from the board to participate in the forum, sharing equally the time on the stage. Uh, we believe this is in the best interest of the 150 voters at special town meeting and the 300 petitioners of which I represent. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Peter Safner. Is Peter here? Hi. Hi, Peter. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I've sort of come here on a very uh, sudden bit of information regarding the extension of Stark Road into what was formally deemed wetlands, an area not suitable for building. I wasn't notified of this, but being a next over a butter, I'm very concerned about this. And I was hoping to get some information about this and understand more about the issue. I know four years ago, a woman was denied access to build because of the wetlands that are very obvious in the area. And I was just wondering what might have changed or what the status of this move is. That's all I have to say. Okay, well, we appreciate your time. And uh, we do have a, a, a hearing that's going to take place later on this evening regarding Stock Ave. So if you want to. Okay. Happy to stick around. Okay. Um, so the next matter, we're going to skip right to our public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I move that we move into the public hearing, um, which is scheduled for 740. Uh, for a license violation. Motion by Betsy. Second. Second by Paul. Roll call. Aye. Phyllis. Yes. Aye. 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 We're open public meeting. So uh, the next, the, the matter on the agenda for the public hearing is the greatest breakfast and lunch restaurant license violation. Um, Oris Os Osmajan. Yes. Good evening. How are you? Uh, Steve, I'm going to 
throw this over to you if you want to <clears throat> certainly uh, address this issue. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, <clears throat> basically, the situation here is that um, the Selectman's Office was made aware that an establishment uh, called the Great American, the Greatest Breakfast and Lunch at 25 Broadway was operating uh, BYOB, meaning bring your own booze, uh, in January. This is, this is contrary to the um, rules and regulations that this board had passed uh, in November and that had gone out to everybody and took, took place January 1st. Uh, I was approached by a member of this board who had uh, seen this item going on, this, this issue going on, and um, frankly, uh, this board member was treated disrespectfully by the business owner, which doesn't sit too well with me. Um, I sent a, a letter to the uh, business owner on uh, February 10th. Uh, that letter was ignored. In that letter, it told them, A, that you cannot uh, operate BYOB. Uh, it's against the policies of the town. And uh, secondarily, although as important, is uh, the common vitriol's license had not been completed and returned to this board and paid for, even though this board had, uh, had granted it as we do in December. Um, that we got no, um, no response at all from the, uh, from the person at all. So about a week later, I actually asked the police to go in there to verify that <laughs> BYOB had been going on. And uh, the police did go in there and did ver verify that that had been going on. And in fact, there was a very large sign in the uh, window advertising BYOB. Um, we then sent out a letter via, the co via constable and asked um, the owner to come in here to talk about this, as this is the licensing board, and this is where disciplinary act action should occur. And that's uh, technically uh, the business uh, was in violation of Section B14, which basically states that there is, of the alcohol regulations, that there are no allowable BYOB in the town of Wakefield. And that's, uh, this is the one complaint that uh, we have and, uh, you know, frankly, we weren't uh, paid attention to until we got to this point. Mr. Os Osman Nudge. Good know. evening, everybody. Pleasure to see the you all. The floor is yours. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that in the past, I have been contacted by phone to renew my licenses, such as the garbage disposable, et cetera, et cetera. The common victuals license was an honest mistake because this place is my livelihood. A lot of other people's livelihood where they do work and have to build their lives around it. And I don't think I would let it get this far over a $35 common victuals payment for the license. And uh, this was an honest mistake for the license. And as for the BYOB, I have no longer been open for dinner since January 1st. And I have the receipts printed out from my computer and the business. Then the BYOB I was doing in 2013, and I had waitresses with a TIP certification serving it. Also, starting January 1st, I stopped dinner. I have all the receipts. Therefore, I, would no, I was not doing dinner. I was not doing BYOB anymore. The sign is an old sign, and I had a professional guy coming in to redo everything and also add the dinner that I'm also advertising, and I will reopen for deliveries, but without the BYOB, and this has not had yet happened. He hasn't come in yet, but I, can, I have all the receipts and everything that this was no longer happening, and also the rest of the employees could come in and vouch that there was no BYOB happening anymore since 2014. I'm going to open up. Uh, can I make Steve. one point? If yes. I, um, the um, police were at the establishment on Friday, February 21st. Friday, February 21st, 2014, <clears throat> there was BYOB going on in the establishment at that time, per the police report and per pictures. I was going to ask it. Right. The, the, the pictures of the people <clears throat> drinking beer inside the restaurant, those are from February 21st? Yes. 
And, and you said you stopped doing this I in was, 2014. Yes, I was not aware because I was. I told everybody to stop doing it since it was only for dinner, and I was not aware people were drinking for breakfast. It's something that I've never even heard about. So. And therefore, I, I, there, there is no extra charge. There was no extra charge, even when I was doing it. So I don't even benefit anything from this. So there's no reason for me to keep it going on. This, I have a lot of new waitresses, a lot of new staff that I go through, and they do make mistakes. And it's understandable. Betsy. It's not understandable to me. All right? None of this is understandable to me. I really don't care about the $35. That's not the issue on your common vigilance license. When everybody else in this town pays up, and if you are a restaurant owner, you ought to know the rules and regulations of the community into which you come to do business. All right? We do not allow BYOB. You probably knew that. And if your establishment is that successful, you don't need booze in there without a license. All right? That would be like saying I hired a professional blackjack dealer to open a polka parlor in my house. It's not allowed. And it's not understandable to me, so I take exception to that. When you tell me that it hasn't been done in 2014, and I look at a, at a police report of February 21st, 2014, you're the owner of that establishment. Your name is on that. You should know everything that you're doing. I don't care if your waitress is a TIP certified. You do not have a license to serve alcoholic beverages, and that's the issue. And I'm not into scoff laws. We're donating our time here for the betterment of this community. And I just found your comment to be offensive. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Phyllis. Um, I think it was a, just a sign of defiance. That BYOB has been on your window, and you have been told to take that BYOB off. And I think you just left that on there on purpose. And I, the people that you rent from, I know, came in and told you. you I have told you, you should not have a BYOB on that window, but you were defiant and left it there anyway. I, I don't understand it. Don't say that you didn't know anything about it. That's not true. Can I speak, please? Anybody else? Yeah. I would also add, based on the police report, that the um, people brought in um, alcohol at 105 in the afternoon. It wasn't for breakfast. So when you say it was for breakfast, it made it sound like at 9 a.m. people were dragging booze in. It was at, it was at, in the afternoon, which you know people should ex you might expect that. Pat, yeah, I, I mean, I want to echo Betsy Betsy's sentiments first of all, sir. Uh, number one, number two. If um, what I'm hearing is correct, you were rude to one of our fellow selectmen. And number three, um, our police department is disputing your claim, saying that they witnessed it. Our police chief is here tonight. Um, you've got some explaining to do. First of all, I'd like to apologize if I have offended anybody. Like Miss Betsy Sharahan said, if my business was so successful that I would know this and that, I'm a young business owner, and my business is not successful, if you really want to know. And I've been declaring a loss there for the last year because it's in a tough place, in a tough area, and I've been trying to make it work. I've been working overtime, and maybe I did let a few things get past me, but this was an honest mistake. And as for Ms. Phyllis, that same week where the landlord did contact me, I had inspection by the Board of Health Inspector Chris, and I sat down and asked him about it, and he told me that it was a Massachusetts law for me to be able to do BYOB. That's why, even though I had the TIP certification, that had me thinking that if the Board of Health Inspector is telling me that I should be okay because it's a Massachusetts law for a restaurant establishment to have BYOB and now finding out that it's a different law in Wakefield, it, it, it confused me a little, it threw me off. And if you want, you, my regular waitresses that have been there for a while, they absolutely do not do BYOB. It might, the sign might have confused the new waitresses, but it ha it's no longer there on the window and I had somebody scrape it off even though I was waiting for the professional to come do it. I had somebody take it out of there and it's not there. 
like I said, it was an honest mistake, and I apologize. I know Close. now that you've taken that BYOB sign off the window. All the time that sign was on the window, underneath of it was at no extra charge. You still have there at no extra charge. Why is that there? Because it's very difficult to take off that marker on the window, and if you come see it, I scratched the whole window over there. That's why I need to wait for the professional to take that off. Steve, is there a recommendation? Yeah, I, I would like to see, number one, I would like to see um, the business owner come in and, and, and present us with a uh, uh, signed, completed uh, common vitulous app application so we can get it under there. Um, I'm not going to say I don't care about the $35, Betsy, because every dollar counts, but, but that is part of the thing, too. But I get what you're saying. There's a bigger issue here. And then I think that uh, the board should uh, suspend that license for a number of days. I think you have to take this seriously. There are a lot of places in town that go out and they actually pay to have a liquor license. And, you know, we spent a lot of time on these um, regulations to for the better of the people of Wakefield. Pat. Yeah, one other point that you brought up about having other people depending on you, you know, then you should follow the rules. If you have people depending on you to, to, for waitresses or what have you for, to make a living, then, then know the rules in the community you live in and follow them, just like everybody else does. And Steve, I, that, I'm glad you brought it up because that's exactly what I was gonna suggest, some type of a suspension. Uh, I don't wanna put somebody out of business, um, but you know, this is about as close as we can get to um, put, you know, the next step I would say is to, is to pull a license, but I'm in favor of a suspension of some kind until uh, this gentleman is up to date 100% and has come in and made Steve feel comfortable that going forward he's going to be a, a, a responsible operator in this town. Brian? Yeah, just, I, I wouldn't normally, if, if this were a, um, a first offense, geez, uh, it, it's a new rule, I made a mistake um, kind of thing, or even an honest, hey, I was testing the waters, I didn't know you guys were really going to enforce this. Um, uh, I, I would actually have some degree of appreciation or leniency for that. Well, hey, no, this is real, and that's why you're here. Uh, I'm, I'm disturbed, much like another case we had recently regarding you know the sale of car of vehicles and stuff like that, where you've been, you were you had a verbal warning where somebody said, hey, that's no longer legal in town, at, to which there was a some sort of altercation or, or uh, you know unpleasant exchange or response that was given. That's not, not a smart move. Uh, then there was a letter sent that said, just so you know, this is illegal. So now the, the argument, hey, I, I didn't know this was illegal or it was new or I was confused, that's kind of deaf ears because you had a letter sent to you and people knew about it. Uh, and you still left the, the BIOB. And you know, it's probably, I don't know for the folks on TV if you're going to get a shot of that up on a camera, but I mean, it's a really big sign. And BYOB are the biggest letters on the sign. So, um, that, in the face of having been, been warned and reminded on several occasions, is the reason why I would be in, uh, in support of a suspension. It takes, it takes a lot to get me to move to that, that area. I think just having to come in here is probably painful enough uh, for most things. Um, but for, um, for you to be, to basically have this wanton disregard for the rules after they've been clearly presented to you, that, that's where it gets troubling and we have to do something about it. Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? Let's see. Ready? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the license for 30 days beginning tomorrow. At there is no license in effect now. What I think you'd want to say is assuming that. that right, assuming the that he pays not, the 35. One, right. one, the business is not to be opened until there is a license that is in force. Two, from the, from the time that the license is granted upon a proper application and fee, it's suspended for however many days you want. All right. 30 days is what I'm going for. Um, Can, hold on. Can we take a little poll first before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to speak to the 30 days. Go right ahead. I'm in favor of a suspension. I think 30 days would put anyone out of business. And I know as a former member of the Board of Health, 
um, we wanted to send a message. We wanted to send a clear message. We, clo we t took cigarette licenses away from people, which was a huge monetary loss, and um, started with more days than th I think 30 would shut you down, and, and that's not the intention. The intention is to send a clear message that we know what you were doing, we're not stupid, um, and we want to get that across. So um, I, in talking with the town administrator, we thought seven might have been oh at my. the higher end. Well, what a draconian <laughs> um, motion I made. <laughs> Would you like to modify it? Would I like to modify it? Yeah. Do I have any choice? No. Yeah. I'll modify it for seven days from the date that the Common Vigilance License is uh, uh, taken out, paid for, and the, for the $35. And then that seven days will give you a chance. And I'll tell you what will take that junk off your window. Get some acetone. Get some nail polish remover. We'll take it off in a New York minute. You won't have to pay a professional. Give you a chance to get your menu set. You'll be all set. I'll modify it to seven days. Feeling very moved good. By, <laughs> moved by Betsy. Yeah. Seconded by Second. Pat. All in favor? Uh, uh, Aye. Okay. Discussion. Sorry about that. Um, when does the, how long does it take to get the common victualler's victual license? We can do that as soon as he comes in. Okay, so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. he's in business and presumably this, I, I just didn't want to hear that that would be a two-week right. issue no. followed by a seven-day, so no. now we're right back to uh, right. our no, we'll, we'll be good. Right. Thank you. <laughs> well, that all depends upon how fast he comes in. Right, right. I bet she's going to well, come in. Him. <laughs> what? Tomorrow morning. Good. I'd like to thank Ms. Santos because 30 days would have put me out of business and to tell you the truth, I would have left my key here with you guys if I did get the 30 days because I wouldn't have been able to make it. Even with the seven days, I hope I can make it because it's a lot of money I'll be losing. And it would be sad being the only guy that's making it there after the last five businesses did run out of business. Mm -hmm. And to be put out of business for what I think is, and I apologize if you guys think I'm insulting your intelligence, and if you think that I'm trying to pass one over on you, if there was liquor being served there, it was not in my attention, and I did not know about it. And when I did ask the Board of Health Inspector, a worker for the city, and he tells me that it's a Massachusetts law, it kind of brought up a few you know, other ideas in my mind, thinking it was something else and not not a real thing. And I apologize again. Thank you very much. So the motion was seven days from seven the time days. of the accepted common bitches license. Well, that was second by Pat. Everybody in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Can I get a motion to close our public hearing? So second. Moved by Ann. Second by Paul. Roll call. Yes. Yes. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, all right. We're going back to public participation. Uh, the next person on the agenda for public participation is Joe Ventura, 53 Stark Ave. Is Joe here? Yes. <clears throat> Steve, I thought you said 32. Oh. <laughs> Kind of shook him up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Joe Ventura, 53 Stock Ave. How are you? Um, I just want to uh, discuss this uh, um, house development that's uh, going in on. Uh, Joe, if I, uh, sure. uh, I'm not sure if you were here when we first started, yeah. but um, public participation, you have three minutes to make a statement to us. Sure. There's no interaction okay. uh, between us. Uh, we can move to extend that by two minutes by two thirds vote. Okay. okay. We are going to have a, uh, a, a hearing sure. on this matter. Afterwards, so okay, you know we may allow for okay f further discussion. Right, okay. Three minutes, maybe enough. I'll talk. Perfect. Fast. Thank you. Um, so they're trying to put a house at the end of um, Stock Ave. Um, I've been living at the end of Stock Ave for 17 years. There's been uh, several developments that, that have uh, um, they've been trying to get it there through the past years. Everything has been uh, denied. Uh, length of the street. It's 1,500 feet long. Uh, dead end in Wakefield should be uh, 600 feet, as, as far as I know. Um, so that's uh, definitely uh, an issue. There's also an issue uh, at the end of Stock Ave, uh, my neighbor, Jenny Hopkins, um, there's a slice of land there that in order to put this house in, it's, it's town land that they have to go through. 
take two fences, two um, sections of fence down, and a town-owned tree, which was actually planted by the town some 40 some odd years ago. Uh, Jenny's lived there for 52 years, has maintained that strip of land, and it actually seems like they're going right through her front yard to put this development in. Um, and what we're all now, what I've been told is that you know, 25 years ago that was a buildable lot, um, and that you're obligated to let him build. But what I feel is, with all these other developments that have tried to go in down there that have been denied, it's because of safety issues. And so now I feel like. Uh, if this goes in, it's just like subbing your nose, snubbing the nose at the safety of the people of Stock Ave and all the children down there. So um, we're, we're really concerned about this, and we feel like it should at least get to the planning board because th there's some issues there that need to be discussed, and uh, we're not, we don't have any avenue to discuss these issues, length of the street, with the land on Ginny's, where they're going to go through on town land. I mean, I don't think a developer can just go through town land to make his housework without getting permission from the town and taking down town trees. Uh, I, don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's right. And um, so we're actually asking for the selectmen to really take a good look into this. Uh, we're looking for some protection, and uh, we just want your time to, to you know, whatever, whatever you can do for us and uh, take a long, hard look at it. We're afraid that after, if this house goes in, all these other landowners are going to come back, and now they're going to want to build there. And that seems odd to me that all these would get denied one house will go in without having to go to the planning board. And now these guys can come back and they're going to say, well, what about us? We were denied all these times and now look at what you just put there. What about us? So we feel, so that could, that could be uh, bad for the town too uh, because it, it just doesn't look good. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. you, Thank you folks. Thank you. Uh, James Frischer. James Frischer. Len Melton. <laughs> Mr. Is he coming? Mr. Frisch, you have three, three minutes to make your statement to us. Good evening. Thank you. Um, uh, I live in Molly Circle. We have Budstock Ave, same issue with this uh, property. Conservation, wetlands, all being uh, just basically stepped on. Um, I've, been, I've been living in Wakefield for 10 years. I was here for the Mother's Day storm. The water tables were out of control, near flooding my property. And, and I believe that'll affect a, a lot of the surrounding properties that abut that um, stock have where all the um, where all the storm runoffs eroded, and uh, it's just a really uh, it's a concern. Once we open the gates, the floodgates, they'll all come. They'll all want to build, and uh, you know, just to disrupt this conservation land, these wetlands. So that's basically all I want to say. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Melton. Good evening. Um, I just want to, uh, you know, I've uh, been involved um, in the listening to the, in going to the hearings in the, of the Conservation Commission, so I have some comments I'd like to take away from that. Um, the area affected by the proposed agreement is a large area of hills and wetlands. The area has a history of flooding problems and is one of several areas that benefit from the work of the Conservation Commission. With that said, we find ourselves disagreeing with and concerned about several aspects of the proposed agreement. We strongly urge the Board to delay action until several issues of further research and recommendations are considered. We are, number one, we urge the Board to delay any further action until a lot identified as conservation area is removed from the proposed agreement. A few days before the most recent commi commission hearing, there was an important realization that this lot is actually a separate second lot. There was no discussion of the lot until the last meeting, and it appears this lot should not be included in the proposal. This lot also was required to be given to the town, but was not. 
It appears that the town is currently in the process of taking the property for unpaid taxes, but the process is stalled, further supporting our argument that action should be delayed until this issue is addressed. Two, we have concerns about the design, size, and certainty of the perpetual access easement that the town will receive in the proposed, proposed agreement. The easement is intended to be used as a connection in a restricted use re nature trail. It is approximately 20 feet wide by 500 feet long, 9,000 square feet, and will allow paving and lights. Because of its size, the easement also potentially allows the connection of a paper street that runs through and opens up a large area of wetlands that is important to flood control. <clears throat> because of the potential for unintended consequences, we urge the board to not accept the proposed agreement with current easement dimensions. Three, instead of accepting the proposed agreement from the board, we urge it to pursue an action that aggressively defends the order of conditions and its goals, especially as it applies to Lot 26 and the lot identified as conservation area, Lot 24A. The order reflects the critical importance of these lots to flood control because it explicitly states the lots should be given to the town. This gives the lot the fullest protection to help control flooding. Additionally, please consider the precedents that will be set if you do not defend this order of conditions. <coughs> Four, the third whereas in the proposed agreement describes one of the related legal problems being addressed. The whereas describes an unwritten agreement the, con uh, the Conservation Commission and the developer had that was discussed 25 years ago outside the context of the order of conditions and is being used to justify the developer's failure to relinquish Lot 26 as explicitly required by the orders. Mr. Melton, if I can interrupt you for one second. Do you have much more to go? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. After listening to the descriptions of the agreement during the several months of the Conservation Commission hearing, we urged the board to further research the nature of the informal agreement and further research whether it carries the legal merit to undo a key element of the order of conditions. I, I have one more item. Is that right? Go ahead. Five, as part of the process of aggressively defending the order of conditions, we urge the board to direct town council to challenge the developer's argument made to the Conservation Committee that Lot 26 should now be treated as an independent lot and not as a lot in the Mardin Estates development. Not being part of the development allows for significantly less stringent regulation of the property and considerably less protection for butters and downstream properties. Example, requiring a property plan for 10-year for storms rather than 50 or 100-year storms. Again, we urge the town to take a course of action that aggressively supports the order of conditions and its goals. Additionally, please consider the pre precedent that would be set by allowing protections to be circumvented in such a manner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we make a point of order? Go ahead. If, I, if that's right. Can we Go get ahead. a copy of what he just read? Um, I have copies. Is that possible? Yeah. I have copies. Is that a, a okay. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Joe Kelton and I'm assuming they want to go together. And Terry Kelton, are they here? That's no. 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 I'm sorry. Same <laughs> right. family. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. That, Whoever signed it looks like a cave, so my. That's all right, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here about the same, um, this, you know, the same issue about the, the lot number 26. So tonight you'll be asked to vote on an issue that should have been rectified in August of 1987. And we have actually been part of this since 1987. Um, before you is a request that the Conservation Commission asking for approval for an executed access easement to the town over the property designated on order of conditions registered in the book, and we have actually the order of conditions with us. Um, so it's book 19691, page 85, um, of the Registry of Deeds, uh, dated August 17, 1987. In return for approval, Mr. Angem expects clear title to the lot noted as number 26 and conservation area number 24A. In accordance with number 32 of the order of conditions, Massachusetts Wetlands Act, um, Protection Act, 
um, lot 26 was to be deeded to the town of Wakefield prior to the issuance of certificate of compliance. At town meeting, this was voted down. However, Medina Estates was allowed to move forward and build a development. It is our contention that since town meeting voted down the, de the deeded property um, in 1987, all work should have ceased on Medina Estates and a new order of conditions should have been brought before the Conservation Commission and any other boards for approval. We believe that the Conservation Commission has overstepped their boundaries um, as a protective environmental committee. If the above lot was of importance 25 years ago, this situation should have been addressed prior to the approval of the subdivision known as Mardina Estates. We are requesting that the board take no further action until all legal ramifications can be examined. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I think uh, uh, further on this is that, you know, again, we were there 25 years ago. And it was important at that time that that lot 26 and 24A were independent in an order of conditions signed by the Conservation Commission. Um, you know, we get to a point where if it was important 25 years ago, what makes it less important now in regards to floodplains uh, and because it's an individual lot, not part of a subdivision. Also, it's coming out onto Stock Ave Extension, not an accepted street. Should this be brought before the planning board, whereas it's not going on to Stock Ave, the accepted street? We already know what Child Street Extension looks like with Mardin Estates, potholes, and it hasn't been brought up to code. Is that what we're in for? You know, I, I just, overstepping the boundaries of the commission, you know, it might be a strong terminology. We were told during the meeting that their aim is environmental protection. My question is, is land swap part of the deal with the commission? I don't think so. I think that's a legal matter that this committee should look at further. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for your time. Ryan McGrail. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Uh, I'm, I'm here on behalf, um, I'm a resident of Wakefield, but I'm also here on behalf of my client, John Angem, who is the owner of the uh, subject property, Lot 26. And I, I'd, I'd just like to put out, point out a few factual points for the board uh, that might be helpful in your consideration tonight. Um, first of all, we're not looking for any um, authorization from your board to build on this lot. I think that's important. Somebody had mentioned that, that did not grant authorization to build. Um, with all due respect, that's not the jurisdiction of your board, and I think uh, you folks recognize that. Um, also, um, I think another thing that's important to point out, there's no extension of Stock Avenue here. Uh, this lot 26 was part of an approved subdivision plan. It was signed by the planning board. This is one of the lots in Mardin Estates. So a lot of people, even during the Conservation Commission hearings, have said this, this should go to the planning board. It was at the planning board. Lot 26 is a two-acre lot, which my client owns and wants to go one single family home on, with no further desire to divide it or extend it. He's actually uh, stated to the Conservation Commission he's happy to accept the condition that it will not be further subdivided. Wants to live there himself, Mr. Angel wants to build his own, own home there. So I, I think it is important to know that this has gone through the planning board process and, and it's part of that subdivision plan which is recorded, actually recorded at the Registry of Deeds. This has been a seven month process at the Conservation Commission. Um, very long for their terms. Um, in addition to this issue, <clears throat> I think it's important to note that my client has filed a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission for an order of, order of conditions to build his house, which that order of conditions is to deal with stormwater management and drainage. And as one of the commissioners said at the last meeting um, to the folks who were here tonight, my client has gone above and beyond what they could even normally require, but he's voluntarily taken extra precautions and made the tension basins bigger than, than is outside their jurisdiction. So he's been extremely cooperative uh, with the Conservation Commission. Um, they have jurisdiction on that, uh, not the Board of Selectmen. The only matter before your board tonight is whether or not you 
decide to allow the Conservation Commission to accept an easement that the Conservation Commission requested from my client, and he agreed to do it. Um, the Conservation Commission, pursuant to an order of conditions in the late 1980s, had an issue with my client, and vice versa. Uh, he had an issue with them. Um, they've met over the summer, as I've mentioned, this has been going on for seven months. They've come up with an agreement. I believe the Conservation Commission uh, uh, spoke with town council regarding that agreement. Um, my client thought it was reasonable and agreed to it, as did the Conservation Commission. That agreement states the facts. It references right in the agreement that part of the deal relating to Lot 26 was that the town was going to convey an easement, and it acknowledges that that did not happen. Um, and the Conservation Commission discussed that in their meetings. Um, they've resolved their differences. Uh, it's something the Conservation Commission has jurisdiction over. The Conservation Commission has jurisdiction over orders of conditions in wetlands. This condition that we're talking about is part of an order of conditions. They've resolved it to their satisfaction. Massachusetts General Laws states that they need your approval to accept an easement, which they've requested, as part of their resolution process with my client. It's not about anything else. It's not about construction. It's not about roadway extension. It's about an order of conditions, which they have jurisdiction. They've asked for an easement. My client's willing to give it, and they just need authority for your board to allow them to accept it. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a seven-month process. Um, and, um, you know, I think the other thing that's important to note, just for a you know, point of interest, you know, the condition that's talked about says that the property will be deeded to the town. It doesn't say for how much. It doesn't say for nothing. It doesn't say for nominal consideration. Um, so that would obviously uh, be an open issue also. You know, not, not many people have, have talked about that component. Um, hopefully, um, you know, there's been talk about other landowners and the possibility of extending Stock Avenue. This lot on Stock Avenue is the last lot that was signed by the planning board. It's part of the planning board approval of the Mardina Estates. No other lots further down um, are afforded that protection that, th that this lot ha has. Hopefully that's helpful to the board. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right. Uh, so that, I think, concludes our public participation. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of uh, matters here. A personal appointment. Uh, can I get a motion to appoint Jean C. Stinson for Norway Street? Uh, tell, her, tell her to precinct four. So moved. Moved by Betsy. Second. Second by Phyllis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, appointment to the Lake Corner Power Subcommittee, Stephen J. Breton, 12 Armory Street. Mm. So I get moved. a motion. So moved. Moved by Pat. Second. Second by Betsy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And can I get a motion to approve James H. Murphy, 44B Salem Street? So moved, second. Mr. Chairman. Moved by Betsy, second by Pat. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to skip right down to. Um, uh, 5E on our agenda, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and Tom, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'm going back to Stark Ave now for the public's uh, knowledge here. Um, Tom, so uh, the approval request by the Conservation Commission of the acceptance of an easement from uh, Angem over Lot 26 of Mardina Estates. Floor is yours, Tom. I think it's important to bear in mind what is and is not before your board tonight. The Board of Selectmen does not lay out subdivisions. The Planning Board does. That's already been done. The Board of Selectmen does not decide how to condition construction in order to preserve wetlands. That's for the Conservation Commission. Here, all you are being asked about is whether to assent to the acceptance of an easement that the Conservation Commission has already agreed to. As you know, when we accept easements, we generally go to town meeting and get authority for it. There is one exception to that rule. Under Chapter 40, Section 8C, the Conservation Commission may accept conservation easements, provided only that they get the approval of the Board of Selectmen. That's the narrow question before you, whether the corridor that is proposed as an easement for purposes of a trail be accepted by the town for conservation purposes. This case takes me back. I was appointed town council in 1994, and one of the first matters I had was this. 
litigation begun under my predecessor by Mr. Anjum was pending against the town, seeking to compel the town to release the orders of conditions that indicated that Mr. Anjum had to deed Lot 26 to the town. We went to court about it, and the court decided that it was just going to leave everything in place. It was not going to uh, take any action in favor of Mr. Anjum. And there was no counterclaim by the town to compel uh, the conveyance of Lot 26. Uh, and I didn't add one because, as I understood, and could be mistaken, but uh, it appears that the original idea was that the conveyance of Lot 26 would be in consideration of the conveyance by the town of drainage easements. Those drainage easements were proposed to town meeting and less than a two-thirds vote supported it. Therefore, those drainage easements were not conveyed. So we were in this kind of limbo uh, where Lot 26 is burdened with a now lapsed order of conditions that no one can issue a certificate of compliance for. But the town is not in a position where it can go to court to compel Mr. Anjum to convey the property to the town. So we have a piece of property that's stuck there in a kind of legal limbo. Uh, last year, the Conservation Commission and Mr. Anjum, through his counsel, uh, started talking about trying to agree to something that would break the logjam. And that is how we got here. The proposal is to give the town not the entire property, but rather the easement for the trail. Uh, I agree with uh, Attorney McGrail that the, if, uh, if Mr. Anjum wants to build anything on Lot 26 or indeed anywhere else that is wetlands or is within 100 feet of wetlands, he's going to have to go to the Conservation Commission to get a current order of conditions. The order of conditions we're talking about here is long since dead. These things lapse after three years. So you're not being asked to decide whether the wetlands consequence of the construction of a home on Lot 26 is going, needs to be conditioned in one way or another. That's not your job, and that's not the issue before you. Um, and the proper way to deal with those, that issue and any runoff issues that the neighbors are concerned about is through the Conservation Commission process on that new order of conditions. Now, I don't mean to influence you one way or the other about the narrow question that is before you, but I don't want you to be deflected from that question or distracted from it by other concerns. The issue is, do you want to approve of the acceptance by the Conservation Commission of this easement, or do you not? Which, th there's a, uh, a plan attached to the agreement that we're being asked to, I guess, approve. Can you help orient me to uh, lot, lot 26 and exactly where the, the easement is? I see a dotted line easement, but I don't see anything on here, and I, I've blown it up on the computer here, but I still don't see anything called lot 26. It must have a, you know, a different name. Yeah, as I... Days. So what, what, what is it now known as? Uh, on this plan, lot 26 is shown as lot A. Okay. That's helpful. Okay, and so the e and lot A is that it happens to be, it looks like it's a, is it, is it T-shaped, basically? L-shaped. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I don't, I, I can't see any more than you can with the top of the plan. It's cut off there, so I don't know what it looks like above that. Uh, but... Yeah, there's a supposed to start yet. Okay. Can I just look? Do you, do you have what it is? Yes, yeah, so yeah. you know, it's like an upside down T. I can see it from yeah. here. Is that, that's it? <laughs> there we go. Use this one.
still trying to figure it out. So just, I guess I have a follow up. <laughs> so, 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 where, so where's the easement? If that's, if that's the lot, I'm calling it an upside down T. I see the dotted line. What exactly is the easement that? Well, the easement is. Look at the look at the left side of the plan, and you'll see a note that says "proposed variable width access easement, area 9,345 square feet." Do you see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. That indicates a like a corridor. I've used the term that runs between Lancaster Road and Aberdeen Road. Hmm. And to, to those roads, those roads are those are paper streets. They are paper streets. Yes, so that, they don't. That, those are just woodlands right now. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I don't know if they're woodlands. I know they're not constructed streets. Right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Pat. Question, Tom. Is there is it possible with the, the Blue Bluestein property in the way? Is there any way that Lancaster Road could be constructed in that area as part of this easement? Well, the easement, the easement does not contemplate its use as a public way. No, I, that's, I know that's not the question I'm asking, though. Is it possible that a street could be built there with, with the blue? You'd need, probably need more of an easement either through the Bluestein property or Lot A, correct? To, to, to enable, I mean, Paper Street can turn into a street. I've seen that on my own street. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, with the easement uh, request in front of us, is it possible that something other than a trail could be built there? No. Okay. Look in, in particular to the terms of the perpetual access easement. Uh, grantee shall have the right to permit the public at grantee's sole discretion to pass and repass over said access easement on foot, including skis and snowshoes, and non-motorized vehicles, and subject to such rules and regulations as the grantee shall deem appropriate. Now, the grantee is us. Right. Paul, did you have something? Uh, um, just clarification, <clears throat> that's all. Uh, um, but I'll, I'll defer. For the time being, if you want, uh, you want me to go for now? I'm not sure if that I'm done. Good. I'm done. Okay, so so the easement that I'm seeing that's being requested is the one that starts from the far left hand side of the page, the 20 foot wide short easement, and goes east along the bottom of lot A. Is that correct? No. Sewer it, easement it, it doesn't. It's this one. It doesn't start where it says 20 foot wide sewer easement. That's an existing easement. Okay, so the uh, so the easement then starts within the. Uh, in it abuts Lancaster Road on the left side of the plan. Okay, so. And then it goes and then it goes over parcel 24A, over parcel 24, over the discontinuous part of Lancaster Road and dead ends at Aberdeen Road. Okay, and then if I'm not mistaken, inside on the order, it, it states that there will be no subdivision of Lot A. Is that true? Is that correct? Well, we've heard that today. Again, you're, you're not being asked to comment on um, or, or to take any position on further subdivision. So I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. The original orders and conditions, they've expired, correct? Yes. And no one ever renewed? Additional three-year extensions on those orders and conditions. I, no, I believe know. those those are dead. Uh, new orders and conditions are going to be associated with this. If there's to be any construction on what's shown here as Lot A, there'd have to be 
a, a new order of conditions, assuming that the construction would be in or within 100 feet <laughs> of Western Mass. Mass. Do we know how much land is within 100 feet of? Oh, I don't know. Well, that begs a question. Go right ahead. How much of the easement is in wetlands? Uh, uh, hold on. That's the chairman of the Conservation Commission. Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Sorry. Luciano, you want to come up and have a seat, please? Uh, and, I, and I ask that only for the fact that if they're asking for the easement to be used as usable land, if it's in the wetlands, it's non usable. It's if it's part of a stream, it's just for if it's a stream, right. you're not going to walk through a stream. On this side of the easement, there's a stream that runs down here. So even if you took the scent, I'm not sure exactly where it is. It's somewhere in this area. So this easement, we would have to build a small bridge, you know, footbridge to go yeah. over it. So it would be 100 feet from the bank of this little stream. So I mean, we could be out here somewhere as far as you know, conservation requirements. <coughs> Um, Tom, may I ask you a question? What is the potential liability for the town if we don't assent to this? Well, if we don't assent to it, I have heard from counsel for the owner uh, that there may be a lawsuit uh, arguing that the town has taken this property. Uh, in, in effect, without going through the process of eminent domain and without paying fair and reasonable value. Right. Okay. But that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. It's a veiled threat. Oh, there's nothing veiled about no, it. No, it's not veiled. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. <laughs> You know, can I uh, just say one thing is that we really wanted this easement because we do try to promote the open space and recreation plan, and this was a way for us to link two town parcels. So um, for us, it was it was an important uh, component of, of this whole process. Tom, uh, are we under a limitation to make a decision? In terms of time, you mean? I can only speak to what's in the agreement Well, I guess, I, guess my, I guess my question is, when does his right to um, it, uh, institute litigation against the town commence um, if, is it right away? I don't want to be giving you advice about no. the, a potential litigation unless we are in executive session. And that would include exactly when the claim would accrue, if at all. <coughs> Betsy. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to town council. You have given us counsel uh, on what we are voting on and what's within our jurisdiction and what is absolutely nothing to do with our jurisdiction. We cannot give permits, we cannot subdivide, we cannot put restrictions on uh, subdivisions. Am I correct in saying that? Well, no subdivision is before you. That, the that's The only my point. question before you is whether to accept the easement. And that's what I'm trying to get at. The only question before us is to accept the easement. Is the process, if the easement is accepted by this board, <coughs> upon the, I think it's a unanimous vote of the Recreation, uh, Conservation, Conservation Commission, was it unanimous? Yes. I saw all the signatures, I didn't know if the vote was there. All right. Then any p person or persons would have the opportunity then to go before the Conservation Commission and or the Planning Board and bring these issues before them. Is that correct? Well, anyone who wanted to could appear and speak at the Conservation Commission's hearings on any order of condition for construction on Lot 26. Right. I doubt that there would be any occasion for anyone to go to the Planning Board. Okay, but, the, but an issue could go to the Planning Board if anything's going to be built there. No. I don't mean on this easement. I'm not talking about this easement. No. I'm talking about all of the land up there. 
the, the planning board has done its job already by approving a subdivision. I understand that. So, right. But so it's not going to start all over again, is my point. The process is just going to be the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. That's all that would be necessary all right. in order to build a single family house on Lot 26. Th that's, that's, that's all I'm saying is the single family house. And then the order of conditions, which has a life, a shelf life of three years, would then be initiated. Right. <coughs> All right, and then the clock would start ticking then. Right. All right. The flip side is if this board does not okay this, I just want to get everything in line here, then there is the potential for a lawsuit against this town. There is. There's the potential is there. Right. And um, <coughs> I just want to get it straight because it has, there, but there is recourse if this board does vote it, and that would be at the Conservation Commission. Right. Right? That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, Mr. Luciani or council or whoever's appropriate to answer it. I, you know, I'm trying to look on a, uh, you know, an aerial view of the area, um, trying to figure out exactly where out in the woods we're talking about here. And I can I can find a river going through, and it looks like that might be the one you're talking about. It looks like it, it's fed off of a large, kind of a larger body of water. Is it? Can you help me figure out where we're what we're talking about? No, I think there's plenty of people here. The virus probably know better exactly. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I can share that info with everybody here once I get yeah. it. But, you know, I can see your river <coughs> off the end of the street, or is where, it right where here? Where the stop is. The Sorry stop about is that. Right here, right. Just start. And then you come down to the end. Which is right there. Yeah. So we're, we're actually in. See that? See that right there? That's the street. Right there, it goes into this retention area. Okay. This is lot 24A, okay. which we don't have a problem with. Lot A? That's 24A. Lot A, well, according the easement, that, according to that, is somewhere up in, it's somewhere up in this area it's here. A lot. So lot 26 is. It's it's this this is lot 26. Yeah. Right. right. Is this a house right here? Does no, it come out no, in between no. these houses? No, no. See, it's. It's, this is the house on the opposite side of the street. The street is, comes in front of it. Actually, it this, you, that's what they're all saying is that the street, and they're right, the street ends. Um, right after this. This, right, see that house okay. there? So it's right in here. This is the access point. That's the stream right there. So how do they access, the, how do they? They're going to develop this, you know, pave this area in here and come up with a road. And just go around the, yeah. the river. Is it, they actually this there's, there's actually a, a pipe that runs from here over to here. Oh, so they a long time ago they right. set it up. So yeah, they they set it up a lot. Yeah. That's that, helpful. Okay. That brook does not end. It goes underneath a culvert and it goes all the yeah. way yeah. down to the mouth. That, that's what he showed me. So they, they would they would access through here at the end of the road and build it right. here. Yeah. All right. Does anybody else have any further comments on just, this? Just one, just one quick question. Is lot A, lot 26? Is that where we yes. build? That's house? right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So it's basically the end of Stark Ave. It would be where the road currently dead ends now. You. Question. Uh, just addressing um, Mr. Melton's one of Mr. Melton's questions. Number one, lot 24A. Where is that on here? 24A is down at the lower left. Gotcha. I see that now. Um, now, uh, as I understand it, it says now or formerly town of Wakefield. That was on the basis of a tax taking which I'm informed was done improperly and has been reversed. Now, I've been told by Attorney McGrail that his client, the owner uh, of that parcel, has not been paying taxes on it and would be amenable to signing it over to the town if we wanted to. Uh, that's not formally before you, but it's certainly something to think about. And in the, the past, we have been reluctant to accept wetlands uh, in uh, taking them off the pay the uh, the town's tax rolls. The, so the, the easement being requested tonight does not a, a appear on, uh, to me to be going through that parcel. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, um, 
I'm not sure if it's, I, I, I mean, it's been made clear to me that this isn't a, um, a planning board, a zoning board, or a con con meeting, but I'd, I'd like to know what the developer has, what the plans are for the property. I understand it's dead land right now, and it's doing nobody any good. The town's not, uh, well, the town probably is collecting taxes on it, but w I'd like to know what the plans are. I don't know if it's appropriate to ask or if they're prepared to discuss it, but um, I know that their council is here. I'd like to know what the plans are for this property. Brian. Plans for a single family home. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know if I was clear, but uh, we're before the Conservation Commission on an order of conditions for the construction of that home. You, you very mm -hmm. clear. I just wanted to hear it officially. So, I, I, I'm, th those, these things, types of things concern me. Um, you know, a, a piece of land going across someone's perceived, you know, land, um, access, giving them access to this land in the back. A similar thing happened on my street. I mean, they were within their rights and they were su successful in doing so. Uh, I, it's important to me to know what the uh, developer's plans are for the property and I, you know, um, I just wanted to hear it from you. Uh, the Conservation Commission, we've been dealing with that single family home in this other issue for approximately since August. And, um, and uh, I think the Conservation Commission is, is you know, not to speak for them, but at the last meeting, they're satisfied and they're ready to close out the, the hearing on that. It's been a long hearing with a lot of input from a lot of people. Tom, I have, a, I have another question. And take aside the development, what they're going to do. I'm more concerned about the easement and as, w as to what the town is going to do with the easement. I understand they want to create a, a trail, and, um, and that's what the easement uh, explicitly states. Uh, but what does that entail? How much construction does that entail? Does, does that construction going to impact uh, the land? Is it going to impact flooding? Is it going to impact uh, runoff on, on water? Um, so that's, that's what I'm more concerned about. Um, and I, I obviously understand why, what, what issues before us. So the extent of the construction that's going to take place if we're going to put a footbridge over uh, this stream or river, number one, um, if any trees are going to have to be cleared out for um, a trail to be built. Um, so that's, that's my concern, and that could very easily impact the neighborhood there, given what, what's going to take place. So, uh, you know, I, I understand that Mr. Andrew has, has rights, and I understand that the town um, could be put in, a, in a, uh, a, a detrimental position as a result of our actions here, but I don't know enough about the easement in the terms of the extent of what's going to happen there with the easement. Well, you're going to have to talk to Mr. Luciani about what, the, if anything, the Conservation Commission intends to locate there and what it's going to cost, how it's going to be done. I can tell you legally what, what would be permissible. Under the access easement, it would be the construction of bridges, boardwalks, stiles, pavement, lighting and fences uh, where necessary, uh, determined by the grantee to facilitate pedestrian passage or to minimize conflicts with residential use. And this would be an easement that, though in the name of the town of Wakefield, would be a conservation easement. So it would be held by the Conservation Commission. I think uh, the funding for that would either have to come from funds, if they have any, in the Conservation Commission's uh, Chapter 40, Section 8C account, or they'd have to be appropriated by town meeting. So we could grant an easement and then nothing take place. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we, we could, we could always accept this easement and then do nothing. <clears throat> Mr. Lucianov, can you clarify what the Conservation Commission's intent is here? Have there any any specific plans with respect to this? No, we don't. Ha we don't have any plans to do anything there. The way it was written was basically so we could get foot traffic through there. Um, we're just trying to preserve that as an access for the future, and we don't have access off of Stock Ave, so unless the town wanted to buy someone else's lot, which there, there's plenty of them over there that would have bought town property. So it's basically, uh, we're trying to think forward and, uh, and try to make sure that we have the ability to make a trail in that area if we want to. 
<clears throat> some of the area would require a filing because, like I showed you, it's within 100 feet of a bank. Um, we are not ones that want to cut down trees because, I mean, we're trying to keep the woods. So um, we we're trying to do a minimal, as minimal amount of work as we could to get people through there, make it safe. Thank you. Question. I'm a director. Come on up and sit down, please. Thank you. My name Can is Lance Dennis? Kelly, and I'm on, uh, I live on 59 Stock Avenue. I'm a director butter to the piece of property. And um, I, I don't understand if we don't want to take back land because uh, we want to collect taxes on it. Why are we taking an easement? Where are these people going to park that are going to go on this trail? Where do they access the trail? And, and uh, I mean, there's no way for that. I don't, I don't have a problem with a person that owns a piece of property. If they have the right to build a house, God bless them, let them build a house. But now I'm on a dead end street with very, with, nobody goes by right now, but there will be people going by once that house is constructed. And I don't have a problem with that if he has his own, if he has the right to do it. God bless them. But where are all these other people going to access? How are they going to access this thing that's up in the woods? They're going to come and park down on where I live is not a street. It's a paper street. I'm at the, I'm at the very end of Stock Ave and then some, which is a paper street. It is not a street. I know it's not a street because the city won't plow it and they don't pick up my trash. So, and they told me so, you know, that you're not a street. So he's directly across the street from me. If people are going to come down and park down there to go up to this trail with lights in the middle of the woods, you have to climb up. To, I, I don't know where they would access this, and I don't see it judicial for the, uh, for the town to accept this. as a, For what purpose? It, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. M Mr. Chairman, that, go ahead. It, it brings on a question for me. I, I mean... I, I applaud the um, I applaud the the work put into putting this to this deal together, but I'm a little concerned about the ability to put lights in there for what? I, 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 well, hold on. I just want to continue. I I, I want to hear what you have to say, but I want to finish my thought. Um, there's no lights up at um, Breakout Reservation through the tra trails throughout there that I know of, unless I'm missing something. I don't, wouldn't anticipate anybody walking through here at nighttime. Also, um, I mean, a, tra a trail I could see, but maybe stone dust or something that's pervious, that uh, water could flow through, but um, pavement, I mean, if it's a, an area where there's problems for flooding, I, 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 uh, I don't know, I just don't see the benefit. Um, it's not really a through way, it's a short walk. It's somebody. Who's going to go up there to take a nature walk? I, I, I don't. Anyway, I have questions. Mr. Luciani, can Mr. Luciani answer sure. some of those? Sorry. Um, we were trying to think for the future. That property along, that the two that we're going to connect, the two pieces of town property, one is a much smaller piece, the other is a large piece. It's right. like almost 10 acres. Right. And we're not trying to get everyone from town to go walking through this area. I mean, it's for people in the neighborhood that want to walk through the woods. This is an area for them to go. Gotcha. We only left it open to lights and stuff like that, because what happens if the town wants to do something in there for themselves? What if they want to do something a little bit more substantial? They would have the ability to light it up or for safety reasons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do all that. We could take some of that out. I don't really care if we put lights in or not. If you had an objection to lights, we can take that out. I'm not set on that. I really just want to have the easement so that we have that ability to go back and forth. There is another area that you can access off of Holland Road. I think it's Aberdeen Road, which is another paper street. So we have Lancaster on one side. We have Aberdeen on the other, That uh, two access points. And there's a paper street that runs right through the middle of it. It's beautiful land there. It's, um, there's all kinds of contours out there. Some areas are steep, some areas are f fairly flat. It's very densely wooded. It's, it's just a beautiful spot. 
but there's no parking. Thank you. So, hang on one second. Um, I think I've, I mean, I've, I've heard enough so far. Um, the, does anybody else want to briefly speak? Please, briefly, please. Know, sign That's okay. I've been outside. Um, my name is Alyssa Story, and I live at 50 Stark Ave, which is below this property that wants that they want to build and outside in the hallway is half of the rest of Stark Ave and the reason why it is a problem for us has a number of reasons that have to do with flooding the area access emergency vehicles it, I could go on and on we've been at all of those conservation meetings and I don't know why it has been approved now there's so much question around the deed itself there's nothing in paper that says that this agreement was dissolved. Um, we've never gotten answers to these questions at these meetings. And what we're asking from you right now is for protection because there's nothing else. There's no other board we can go to to say, hey, let's have the fire chief look at this. Hey, let's have someone else look at the area. Does that property really belong to them? When he talks about his street, I'm the one who said it's great to, ha to have a walking trail. That Where are they gonna park? There's nowhere to park. It's not a street. It's downhill. There's nothing to it. No fire, right now an ambulance could not get through there and a, an engine, uh, I'm sorry, a fire engine could not get through there. This is Jenny's front yard. They're gonna go right through it because here are the X marks that they already marked off, that they're gonna rip those trees out. These are all questions we have that we have no way to speak to anybody about. We are already being flooded and we don't have anyone else to talk to. It's just at the conservation committee because it was shot down 25 years ago. And it does connect, if, if, I was curious why the conservation committee was quick to move it. It was quick. They are the ones who asked for the continuances. They asked for the meetings to be pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. We all went to all of them. I had all the paperwork from the wetlands protections to the habitat protections. The area itself is so, it's so volatile to flooding and it is downhill to our homes. No one else, no one on the committee, no one else lives downhill to where they want to build it. And ironically, as we're talking about the fact that the paper streets at the top by Holland, from the beginning, I said, if this is his land, why can't you give him access from the top so that it won't affect us downhill? You won't be cutting through any of the property, the wetlands, etc. And it was simply just pushed aside. So what we're asking is for protection. Can you just give us the only opportunity we have now is for you to at least give a continuance, at least give an opportunity for us to be heard, at least give us something so that the zoning board can look at it, the planning board can look at it. There are so many unknowns. If you want access, you can come through the side of my yard. In between, Jenny and I have plenty of room for you to walk through and get to those woods. I'll give you that easement if that's why we're giving this property back to Anjum. Uh, it, it, it's so upsetting to us. So there are plenty of us here that I speak on behalf of and say this. And there is nowhere else for us to go. If you approve the easement, and it sounds simple, they're saying they'll sue you. Well. We have all already put our money together and we're getting a lawyer too. We'll sue it too. It's ridiculous. It really is. It's silly. So we're just asking for an opportunity to be heard further to protect us. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any anything new to new to add? Other than my name is Elias Angel. I'm the owner before I know the whole subject. Yeah, come up to the mic. Have a have a seat, Mr. Andrew. I give you this letter sign, signed by me. This is the letter signed by me. I wish I had more copy. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my name is Elias Anderson, 41 Holland Road. I lived there for about 20 years now. And I came to this town 45 years ago. I did the three street, Rosemary Ave, Collins Road, and Jim Lane, Holland Road. Everything went perfect nice. No complaint, no judgment, no court, nothing. So except the Stark Avenue, the people, they object for the dead end. This is not dead end. This is a, a Paper Street, Stark Avenue, go all the way to Oak Street, maybe. So I keep my letter here. January 1986, meet with the town planning board to do Holland Road. They asked me to donate lot 26. I agree on one condition. If I need easement for drainage on town property, they will agree to give it to me. On May 13, 1987, uh, we went for town meeting and they voted down. Then I have to change the plan, which cost me run too high. Cost me money more than the lot we're talking about. It change the plan, do the, the drainage to the town uh, easement. Uh, the town easement is uh, adjacent to my uh, uh, area, uh, wet area. They all wet area. It's not the dry land. I want to just put the drainage on the wet area. And the town, uh, the water will run to, through the town wet area. Everybody in the town, they say in favor of me. Some people, they went against me in the town meeting. Some, some of the town meeting come. So we went to court to settle the problem with lawyer Mullen that time. And then we postponed it till now. They say to him, you go have agreement together, see what you could do. Now I'm offering that town easement. Why they need uh, extra town uh, land? The town has a plenty land. Why they, they need this lot? They need it for easement to connect the town property. So I give them the easement. And I have my son has a three kids. I want to build a house for my son. And everybody on Stark Avenue, they go back and forth through the town, not just that end. They don't can't talk about that, and that, that is part of the issue. This son of that thing I'll give it to you. This is a, just a time when we have a, a town planning board, a, a town meeting. I don't know why objection for one house lot, I'm not doing subdivision, I'm paying for taxes, I'm paying my own taxes, I bought the land right, with my money, I didn't have it donated. So I asked the town to approve, build this house, I get, get it over. I don't want to go back to the court and judgment and be bad. I, feel, I, I love this town. I don't hate the town, but maybe somebody hate my action because I'm, I'm cleaning the place, I'm doing good. Holland Road was a junkyard. If you go back 25 years, it was full of tire over there. Two, two, 20,000 tire are removed from there. It was like a junkyard, and everybody knows. Thank you. Thank you I asked much. the board to approve it and get it over. Thank you. Anything new? I'm here for a friend of mine, Jenny Hawkins, and uh, I just want to say that... Uh, Please identify yourself. What's that? Please identify yourself uh, and have a seat. Baldwin, I lived in the town my whole life, 50 years old. I live on uh, Meadowview Road in Wakefield. Uh, I'm here for Jenny Hopkins. I'm a good friend. She's been a good friend of my parents through the years. You're going to see. This, 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 this gentleman here uh, approached Jenny uh, at her front yard and told her that she was going to have to take sections of her fence down and go to her front yard, which upset her very much, which I got involved and I started calling people and getting involved. So I understand uh, his, I understand he's trying to build for his son and everything like that, but and also, you know, when you're, uh, you, when you're hurting uh, other people doing it, like, you know, taking and, and, and upsetting her the way he did, like he didn't approach her the proper way, like, 
she's been working for the, the school department her whole life. Her, uh, her husband just passed away, and um, I think she deserves better. You know, I really do. I think I think you guys got to really think about this because they're going to be going through here, and that's supposedly town land. So that's the biggest issue right here. Where they're going from. The end of Stock Ave through her land, this issue is the biggest issue right here from where they're going through her front yard. He told her she was going to have to take this tree down and these two sections of fence, and I think that's that's the biggest issue of all right there. Thank you. Thank you. Can somebody clarify, is somebody building something through somebody's front yard or this land <coughs> on their own property? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can. I, I don't know. It just sounds odd to me that yeah. somebody's... Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I don't know that component of it uh, perhaps you know sometimes this happens some and I'm not saying this is the case but sometimes I think we know that people tend to encroach on the right away that might have happened I don't know I don't even know what the lines we I haven't participated in looking at it that far uh, is her but fence on I, I the engine know. lot is that the is that the it's engine? on town land this is town land that it's on I don't, I don't see any uh, anything here that's mm. any town land here. You see the paper street? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's for the paper street. That's part of the paper. That's actually part of the paper yeah. street with that little tree in the last two seconds. Oh, oh, so her fence is, is in the street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say it, but I think her fence is actually encroached out she, into the she street. She actually gave some so. of her land, too, because they, they didn't yeah. have enough land to turn around at the end of that circle. So half of her front yard is hot top now that, that, that she actually gave to the town. After we were having a hard time in the end, it's a half a circle. So to give her the benefit of the doubt, she had, you know, she had given her All right. Does anybody want to make a motion at this point? The motion would be... <clears throat> the acceptance of the easement from Anjum over Lot 26 of Madina Estates, as pre as presented by the Conservation Commission, um, and the acceptance of that easement. That is the motion. Anybody want to move? I have a question. I've read that question to council before we move. I would too. Yeah. Yep. Um, what is the practical effect? Of a yes vote and a no vote. I mean, is it yes vote? It, it, it's done. We, you know, if the whole thing moves forward. A no vote means there's no easement. But then, what happens? Can they still develop the lot anyway? Or? Well, a yes vote means that there is an easement, and a no vote means that there is not an easement. Uh, and if there is not an easement, then there is also not an agreement by the conservation commission to uh, discharge the uh, existing order of conditions. You heard me say earlier that that order of conditions expired. It did. But the fact that there is not on record a certificate of compliance with respect to it creates a title problem for the owner. So long as that title problem is there, it would be difficult or impossible for the owner to proceed with construction. Okay. With that expired order of conditions, is there, is there any way that we could uh, force the the landowner to convey this property to the town as originally anticipated or, or, or contemplated? Well, as I said earlier, I don't think that that's a, there's a strong argument for us in such a, a, a claim because there's at least considerable evidence. You saw the letter, you and I've seen the town meeting article that was presented uh, concerning the drainage easement. There is considerable <coughs> evidence that part of the that the that the donation of the lot was in consideration of drainage easements which were sought but never authorized so, so the the lot yeah because that um, one of these documents had in front of me says that the, the beyond beyond the, the that gift the word gift was used they'll, they'll gift this lot 26 yeah. to the town but it's hardly a gift it's it's in contemplation or exchange for these other easements that the, they, the, the bigger so problem we never gave the easement so they never gave us the land the bigger problem is there's no there's no written enforceable agreement by Mr. Anjum to convey land to the town. As you know, uh, an agreement for land has to be in writing. Yep. So he never signed a document that said, I will convey this land to you on such and such a date, yep. such and such a time, for such and such consideration. Uh, instead, it is a condition in an order of conditions. 
the only leverage the town has is not to discharge, uh, not, not to sign a certificate of compliance with respect to that order of conditions. The CONCOM is proposing to do that in return for the easement. So if we voted against the easement tonight, the CONCOM at their next meeting could say, fine, we'll do it without the easement and, um, and move on. They could. I, I think this is, oh. No, hold no, on, no. hold on. I think, I think this is a, a very emotional and frustrating situation. Emotional for some people, frustrating, it's, it's very frustrating. This board is being asked to rectify and to try to maybe undo, redo, whatever, the sin of neglect mm -hmm. from 1987, which is, you know, 27 years ago. And, and I, I it, it's, it's very difficult here. On the one side, you have a, a, a group of people that are very concerned about their property because it's been that way for X number of years, 40, 50 years, whatever. On the other side, you have a gentleman that own, owns the property and wants to improve it um, to give a home to his son and three children, whatever it was, grandchildren. Anyway, he wants to build a home. He's not a developer, and, and I think... Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, no, we're not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just one minute, please. Let me finish my sentence. He is not doing a development up there now, which is before, uh, which went, is not even before us. We don't have the right to get into that. I'm just saying he's coming as an individual that wants to build an individual house. That's what we were told. That's what we were told tonight. So that's what we can go by. I can't read anybody's mind. I don't know what's down the future. I have no idea. I'm just saying that this board is in a tough position as I'm sure that the Conservation Commission was, because there's not a stickier board in this town, in my opinion, than the Conservation Commission to get anything passed. All right? You know, no, they're very, they do <laughs> their due diligence, and they are very, very, very um, strict about certain rules. So this board is being asked to accept, if I'm correct, it's been a while since we had the main motion read to us, to accept a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. That that's the bottom line. Am I right or wrong on this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That that's all I want to know because the other stuff all falls into the puzzle, and I understand it. But the issue before us right now, and there will be recourse if this vote if this board votes for it, because then it will go back because there has to be an order of consideration again initiated. And it has to go before the Conservation Commission again for open hearings. Is, am I correct, Mr. Mullen? That's right. Okay. I just somebody's <coughs> saying no to me from the audience. I'm I'm talking to town council. They already said it was done. Once this is done, they said we're done. Well, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, Hold no. On. I'm speaking to. Hold on. What? I'm speaking to town council. All right. I'm speaking to town council because I want to get this straight. Please don't shake your head at me. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, but hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sir, please. I'm trying to speak one to person town at council. A time. That's it. I want to get this straight. We're going to have to vote on this tonight, one way or another. And some people are going to walk out of here happy, and some are going to walk out in aggravated. You know what can I say? There, there could be no construction on Lot 26 without an order of conditions from the Conservation yeah. Commission. Right. How far along they are on that process, you'd have to talk to Mr. Luciani. I don't That's know. right. It would be in their, it's their business, right? It, it is their business. I, we, we've heard tonight that it's commenced already. Right. All right. That's all I'm saying. Right. And they have public hearings. And I, I, I just, uh, this is a mess. Uh, I have, let me tell you. I have a question. Paul, go ahead. I have one last question. If, if, if the property exists today, Lot 26, and that was part of the Bondine Estates when it was done 25 years ago. If the property does go ahead and say, um, is it being is the end is the stock Ave portion of this property is that a paper street? Is it an extension of the 40 foot wide public way? Does it allow access to the property across the street? For further development, I mean, what what's the what what is the legal um, term for what Stock Ave will be past um, Hollins, um, Hopkins House? Is it a paper street, Tom? Right now, well, we use the term paper street very loosely. It's not a legal term. A paper street uh, is 
uh, a private way, typically that has not been constructed. What I see here on this plan is that Stark Ave is a public way down to the, a point in front of the Hopkins house. Correct. And to the right of that on the plan, it is a private way. That is, had not been, it has not been accepted by the town. Whether it's been constructed or not, I don't know, and you can't tell from the plan. I can tell you this. Anybody who has frontage on the private part of Stark Ave has the right to develop the entirety of Stark Ave. Okay? So if so right now Mr. Anjum owning lot 26 mm -hmm. would have the right to pave all of Stark Avenue the the private portion between his property and up to the public way. We heard earlier that Ms. Hopkins may have a uh, I think a fence or something or or trees that might be in the private right of way. If she did then anybody who has, uh, who abuts the private portion would have the right to take that down. Right. Right. Go ahead, Ron. I'm actually uh, curious. Why didn't this pass a town meeting? Hey, hey town, here's land, to, right? Why didn't it pass? Anybody know the history? Well, I'll just say, you know, what was being proposed was that Okay, well, I presented the motion. Um, Chairman, if I may, just one point. You know, this is, and I just want to state this for the benefit of my client. I just ask everybody to put yourself in Mr. Angie's position. It's pretty evident that a deal was made. A deal's a deal. Everybody needs to live up to their end of the bar. The town did not. And for the town now to say that, you know, we're just going to kind of hold you hostage here, even though we, we know that we didn't convey the easement. We know Tom and he didn't approve it. We know that was part of the deal. It isn't fair. It's not fair. It's not right. So that, what I'll do respect to everybody, I think we've heard enough. I, I don't, I, I'm not going to listen to any more comments at this point. Response, but here you gave him the option to make a statement. I'd like to respond. If you're going to make a statement, you need to listen. get in front of the mic. We can't hear you. I think I, I think we've heard enough. Yeah. I think everybody has heard everybody's concerns. To add any more to this, I think is is going to be beating a dead horse. Uh, so you don't have all the facts. Well, hold on a second. We listen. I gave everybody the opportunity to come up here and speak. We allowed public participation first, okay, and then we had this hearing where I allowed every single person that wanted to say something come up and speak. And to have everybody come back up here again to tell me to tell us the same thing, I think is is I'm not going to say inappropriate, but I, I think we I think I have a full I, I understanding. But when you have a selectman asking a question that I can answer because I'm the only resident that lives on the extension of Stock Ave right now, the only one. I think and he had his answer, question answered. He didn't have his question answered. There is no 40 foot right away. Stock Ave is 23 feet. My driveway is 11 or 12 feet wide. And that, that's what you have. That's There's no 40 feet anywhere on that street. It's just not developed. It's just, yeah. Yeah, and real just, quick. Just because I haven't made any comments. I can appreciate everyone's frustration. Frustration. As, a, as an attorney looking at it, I feel like it might not have been a good deal 25 years ago. It was made. Every document I've looked at, I don't see a way, for me at least, not to vote. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to be honest and, and say that um, on the record, not to vote in favor of that original agreement. It, in, you know, Looking back 25 years, could we have changed stuff? Probably yes. But I just feel like looking at what I'm looking at now in the documents, um, I would have to vote that way with the hoping that the Conservation Commission would come up with orders of conditions that will protect the property owners surrounding this property, that will be careful about that. Um, so I just, I wanted to say that because I hadn't spoken. Okay. 
the yeah. Conservation <coughs> Commission's private, they do nothing as far as planning. They just give an order of conditions we, for we water. We Not understand. for planning the streets. Sir, we understand what their role is in town government and what they do to try to protect. Right, so we're okay. talking we about understand conservation that. when we should be talking about planning. This isn't, we don't have jurisdiction over planning with this board. So, that being said. May I make one last comment? I know you're ready to kill me. This wasn't a public hearing, and normally, I, I will tell you, the chair has been extremely cooperative. During an agenda item, no one's allowed to speak. So I, I just want you to know, it's not a public hearing. We're trying to be as open, and, and this man has gone above and beyond, so please don't take it personally that he's cutting it off. You know, I, I, he's got to get, he deserves credit, believe me. <clears throat> so folks, the, I've made the motion. Could you repeat uh, it? Well, the motion as presented and as spoken to us by Tom Mullen, our town council, would be the approval as requested by the Conservation Com Commission of acceptance of an easement from Anjum over lot 26 of Martin Estates. That is the motion. I second it. Second, Phyllis. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. All against? Four, three. Motion doesn't carry. Didn't Thank you. 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 Uh, back on the agenda, we are now on budgets. The first budget we're going to listen to is recreation. Kevin Gill, if you can come up and make a presentation with respect to the recreation budget. Close your eyes, Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the re recreation budget, uh, we're looking to renew the recreation budget as a tax levy item, uh, requesting $50,000 for fiscal 15. This, these funds will be used to fund the position of recreation director. The balance of this, uh, the recreation account will be funded out of the revolving account set up for <coughs> recreation activities. Total budget request is $50,000. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Betsy, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> Next matter on the agenda is the fire department. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you? I think you fight. <laughs> 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 I was trying to pull a budget off of my screen to read it. <laughs> 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 I didn't vote in favor go. of it. So oh. I did not vote in favor, of it, just oh. to be clear. Did you say something wrong? <laughs> Six to one. Yeah, Six that was one. way too fast because I actually had things I wanted to talk about in that budget. So, sorry. For the record, I'm leaving the room. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's what Brian said. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I just. Uh, I didn't really <laughs> My bad. My we bad. can talk. <laughs> we'll answer all your questions. Uh, Steve, we are we have this board approved that position, correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, well, I, I didn't want to talk about that. I wanted yeah. to talk about other things to be added to the recreation budget. So. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, can, uh, all right. Yeah. Can, can I say this? Is that there is a revolving count on that that has money in it. I expect this to be a money maker as we go forward. So I'm very comfortable that we can do a lot, everything else within the revolving account. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Brian, you can bring it up. As we go around the table later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I'm good. I'm fine. I, I just, I just totally, I was totally like, oh, what just happened? So, <laughs> my bad. Sorry, buddy. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little slow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fire department. Uh, uh, next budget is the Kevin, fire department. Before we commence, sure. uh, Betsy Sharon has recused herself yeah. from this vote. Okay. 
Uh, next budget is the fire department sorry, budget. We have uh, Chief Sullivan here from the fire department. Uh, he's here representing both the fire department and the emergency man management budget that we'll hear tonight. The fire department budget, we're, we're requesting an increase of $166,787. Uh, this increase breaks down under personal services, the increase is $139,537, which includes $67,362 in contractually negotiated increases, $55,000 added to the overtime line item, and $17,175 added for the four open lieutenant positions. Under contractual services, there's an increase of $17,000, $2,000 miscellaneous equipment repairs and $15,000 for the EMT certification and training line item which is used also for continuing education for the department. Under materials and supplies the increase is $10,250, $2,500 in the cost of fuel, $2,000 for educational supplies and $5,750 added to the uniform line item. Total budget request is $4,130,159. Open up for discussion. Move approval. Second. Moved by Pat, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> uh, emergency management while we're uh, two Sullivan's here. Yes. Uh, budget number 19, emergency management. Uh, requesting an increase of $5,872. This increase under contractual services is $3,672. We have a small increase in two of the uh, maintenance line items, uh, $700 total, uh, $400 motor vehicle, $300 for other equipment. And then there's an increase in the emergency operations center line item, $2,972. This is used to purchase and maintain equipment within the control center. Total budget request is $30,872. Motion. Move, move approval. Second. Moved by Pat, second by Paul. Discussion? No, thank you. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Uh, who we have here? Chief Smith. We all done, right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, Mike. <laughs> That's the, the right thing to department. say when you got what you wanted. I know. <laughs> wow. Okay. Get out while you can. Mm -hmm. That should have been the motto of the night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have Chief Smith here tonight representing the police department. Uh, this budget. We're requesting an increase of three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, yes. I want to have her come back. Sorry. My bad. Thanks for joining us. Oh, listen, it's my, it's my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Mr. Gill, sorry. Thank you. Uh, this budget we're requesting an increase of $306,670. This increase breaks down under personal services. The increase is $258,261. There is one new position within this budget uh, for an officer for domestic violence for 59,000. There is also an increase in the overtime line item, $134,400. I want to point out that this would be a one-time expense where the department is currently seven employees down and they're gonna be hiring these seven new recruits next year 
and to get through that period of time when these seven employees are going through the, the academy, uh, this will be a one-time bump in the overtime line item in fiscal 15 to cover that time. The balance of the increase, $64,448, is a contractual negotiated increase. Under contractual increase, contractual services, this has increased $35,409. We have increases in office equipment repairs, computer maintenance, repair and maintenance of other equipment, software maintenance. Uh, the big item, the training school line item, $26,600 increase. This is also a one-time increase. This is for the seven recruits to attend the academy. Cost $3,800 each. Uh, the advertising line item has increased $2,200. Uh, this is for community outreach. Under materials and supplies, the increase is $12,500. Small increase in office supplies. Under materials and supplies, it was a $3,500 increase. Also a one-time expense, this is the ammunition for the new recruits. The uniform line item has increased $7,000. The majority of this is a one-time expense for the new recruits. The total one-time expense to hire and train the new recruits in this, this budget is approximately $170,000. Total budget request is $4,693,173. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by, that's a second by Paul. Discussion? <clears throat> Yes, um, I just have a comment to make. Um, I was appointed by the chair to be the liaison to the police, as I have been for the past nine years, and uh, I'm very concerned that we, I know we have to wait for the people to go through the, the academy. I understand that perfectly, and we have to wait for a place for them, uh, a slot for them. And um, I, I'm very concerned that we're down seven bodies. I, um, through you, Mr. Chairman, may I ask the police chief a question? Yes, absolutely. What is your total complement if you had everyone uh, if you had the seven, what is the total number? Like 43, 42, 41? The total. When, we, when, when we get the new recruits trained, it'll bring us to 46. 46. That, so right, that includes the chief's position. I understand that. So we're down uh, seven out of the uh, 45. Let's, I, I'll take you out of the, the mix. Sure. You said 46, all right? Um, so seven out of 45, that, that's, a, that's a, a high percentage, I think, to be down. And, I, and one of the things that this board is uh, we're in charge of two main items here, and that's not to put any other budget down, but public safety and public works. But public safety, everyone in this, every human being in this town deserves uh, to live in a safe community. And um, I can live with some other things maybe, you know, little things, but safety is, is so important in this community that uh, I would hope that if these, if the slots are there, for these seven recruits, and they'll all go in at the same time, Chief? Uh, no, <clears throat> they won't. We're, we're going to do either four and three or three and four, however we can get the seats in the All right, so it depends camp. upon the number of seats in the training uh, in the academy for them. <clears throat> That's correct. This yeah. is correct. Uh, I would, um, can we go to more than one academy? Yes. <clears throat> so there could be the issue that all seven could be covered within or among uh, academies. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yes. What would, would we're trying to do is um, split them up for training purposes. If the plan goes through, as we have, are looking at now, one group would start in August, and then in September, another group would follow. So we'd have either three or four go through together, and then three or four, depending on the number, go through the next class. So I would hope by this time next year, you would have a full complement, exclusive of someone that may retire. Uh, that you're not aware of this moment, our transfer. I would hope so. You know, I, I would hope so too. I think to lose seven out of uh, 45 uh, <coughs> is a, a very high percentage. Um, I don't think any other um, department could lose that percentage and still function as well as you are. So it, I'm complaining that we don't have, not about you naturally or your department, that we don't have enough people, but I also compliment you on the fact that you're getting the job done as far as I know, uh, as well as you possibly can, and you're down seven people. This is a top priority for me to fill those seven positions ASAP. 
We owe every person in this community um, that safety out there. And the situations that you people may run into uh, are not easy to deal with. So they could be very, um, very difficult at times, especially if they're working overtime. You can only do just so much and do it as the best you possibly can, and I think you've probably got your men and women stretched to the limit right now. And um, I thank you for what you're doing, but um, Mr. Mayo, I'd just like to say that that's a, a top priority for me. It, it is for us too, thank you. Um, you know. uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. And the other thing is, is that I'll tell you that uh, Chief and I talk about this almost every day, um, but he is very careful in who he chooses to be a Wakefield police officer. Right. He is very particular, and that has shown in the, in the fine offices we have. Mm -hmm. So he's going to make sure that, you know, when he goes through his interviewing and civil service right. process, he gets the finest he can get. Right. And unfortunately what happens is we have a few of them that are so good and it breaks your heart when they leave. They, they think, you know, the state police is a little bit more exciting, what have you. So we lost a few there. We have a few retirements and all of a sudden we're down five or six. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, so it is, uh, it's an ongoing problem. I get it. Uh, he gets it. And uh, you are right. The people that are there today, they do a great job. I, I don't mean to fill a position just for the sake of no, filling. I, 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 I know you don't. I know you don't. I don't mean that at all. So I don't want that impression it. to be given. That's but a it's, a, it's a it's a top priority for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Just a quick question, Chief. Is the domestic violence officer coming from within ranks? Well, yes. What, what we'll do, what we'll do, Anne, is that um, we'll hire to backfill that position. Yeah. Right. And and then the officer will, you know, be trained and be assigned from the yeah. current. Staff that we have now. Excellent. <clears throat> Good. Chief, I have a quick question. That domestic violence officer, um, is, so what are the, what are the duties going to be, essentially? Um, well, Mr. Chairman, what you probably heard me say this at town meeting, um, the last town meeting was that we hire specifically for the mission at hand. What we want to do is develop a position. Um, that we feel is needed right now that will deal with all family issues, not just domestic violence, but with elder abuse, elder violence, um, <clears throat> child issues, mental health issues. Um, and, and their position will be to, to manage these cases as they come in, do follow-ups with them, guide them through the court system, work with the DA's office to ensure that they get, as victims, every benefit that they can get. Um, it will also <clears throat> leave an area of expertise that is special, especially in today's work. We have these high-risk domestic violence cases that we've been dealing with for quite some time. And quite honestly, although we do, I think we do a great job. I think they need special attention. And we need that liaison to work specifically with the domestic violence high-risk team from the DA's office, which out of Malden Court, is, sadly, is very busy. So to do that from what, the way that we look at it and to do it correctly and to do it in a manner in which the town is service the best way, we feel that this is the way to go. And again, it's, it's just not for domestic violence, but it's also for elder abuse, domestic elder abuse, um, civil harassment orders and whatnot. So it's a kind of a broad stroke, but uh, that will be the mission. Okay, well, I, I, I applaud you in taking that direction. Um, I did an internship in law school where I represented victims of domestic violence in the district courts of, uh, in, uh, Lowell District Court, actually. Um, and I, it's, a, it's an issue dear, you know, dear to my heart, so I, I really appreciate uh, you taking that, that, um, that initiative. So thank you. Um, so we had a motion. It was seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, IT? Yes. Kevin? Uh, we have David Knox here tonight, yep. the, the IT director. Welcome, Mr. Knox. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this budget, budget number three, we're requesting an increase over last year of $18,941. This breaks down under personal services. The increase is $20,870. <coughs> Out of that, 11303 is contractually negotiated increases. We reclassified a vacant Tech 2 position as a business administrative position uh, with an increased salary of $3,312. And we increased the salary for a vacant system administration position by $6,255. Under contractual services, small increase of $312. Software maintenance increase, $2,121. The 
The professional services line item decreased three thousand dollars, where that work is now being done in house, and there's an increase in the telephone line item, twelve hundred dollars, which is based on usage. Under materials and supplies, there's a decrease of two thousand two hundred fifty dollars, a small <coughs> increase in office supplies, one hundred fifty dollars, based on current year usage. We decreased the reproducing and computer supplies, $3,000 due to improved life cycle management. There are more items that are covered under warranty. And we increased, there's a new line item, I'm sorry, uh, the clothing line item, $600, which is due to the work conditions that some staff have to work under. Total request for this budget is $420,814. I get a motion. So moved. Move. Second. Moved by Betsy, second by Paul. Discussion. And may I ask, what is that $600 for the clothing items? What is that for? Dan, do you want to take it? Sure. Uh, as Mr. Gill said, it's the working conditions for certain uh, lower level staff. They're carrying computer equipment, um, crawling under desks, and so forth, and they're uh, causing some damage to their own clothing. Um, it's one of the items that have uh, it's been discussed between Mr. Mayo and myself for a while, and it's it's not uh, it's not a lot to ask, I don't think, for these particular employees. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We got a motion, no seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good night to roll out the new PCs, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> they got the right name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next so matter on the first. agenda. Uh, can I get a motion to establish a date and open warrant for annual town meeting? The proposed date is May 12, 2014. So moved. Moved by Betsy. Second. Second by Ian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, can I get a motion to establish the date to close the warrant for annual town meeting? The proposed date is April 14, 2014. So moved. Second. Moved by Pat. Second by Betsy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next manager on the agenda, banners. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on your computer screens, you will see two designs um, that we continue a discussion after the last time we were in here. Um, we took the information that was given to us by this board and tried to um, come up with something that would be um, a lot more pleasing to the eye. Um, we dealt with a company um, out in Minnesota who uh, worked with us back and forth. Uh, Steve looked at the designs and I had a small group of people come up with the two that are before you. Um, if you look at the f uh, following slides, it's um, possible um, banners that could be made or utilize po portions of them in future uh, banners. These banners that you see before you are seasonal banners. Um, the two that we're asking for approval tonight uh, would only be up for three, maybe four months. And then another set of banners would be um, selected, presented, and um, put up for another three to four months. The existing banners plus the associated hardware um, is being purchased and donated by the, the savings bank. Uh, they will be sponsoring the uh, purchase of these banners um, in support of the Main Street program, which has been established um, about a month ago. So with that said, sir, this falls into um, what we are striving for in the downtown now as uh, ways of enhancing our um, downtown uh, visually. Uh, and this is just one of the many components that are uh, discussed as uh, a means of doing so. So um, I ask that this board um, authorize uh, the purchase of these two banners so that we can move forward in having them uh, put up within the Wakefield Center district of the downtown. So that would be uh, portions of Main Street from, say, the Galvin up to the Rockery and then Albia Street. That's where these would be limited for the time being, unless the board says that we can put them elsewhere. 
Um, I'll take questions. Yeah. I got I, 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 the maroon ones in particular, I think, look great. So oh, if for, for picking them, I'd be unequivocally in favor of those over the other ones. Yeah, it's Just, good. Yeah. I've done a lot of design things. I, I, I like the look. I like everything about them. The, 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 uh, we've come back to silhouettes of people, which um, this is just feedback and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm all, put them up exactly as they are or whatever. However, uh, just a, a simpler, you know, logos should look great, black and white, near, far, everything. Things should be clear. These are a little busy for, I think, for a banner. For, you know, shop, just a shopping bag, outline of a shopping bag. For eat, you know, something that means food. And for a stroll, you know, a parish. It's just a, a simple, you know, one point kind of logo or eat maybe it's a wine glass or something but a one uh, inanimate object uh, kind of logo that represents that activity is better than trying to jam in these people with a fork and a, you know that kind of thing so go ahead uh, let me just explain the three additional that you are seeing were uh, were suggestive banners not that those were a part of the package the oh. only two that are being considered to, for purchase are the blue and the white one the oh. top two Oh. I like the red one. Guess what? The red I one. I do too. The red one. The red one because the red ones were ideas, but because of the exact reasons why you just stated, that's why we didn't present them at this time. For we wanted further, um, further work on them. So for the initial purchase that the savings bank was considering to purchase, it was the blue and the two floral ones for April, May, and June. I think the maroon ones are just uh, classy, tasteful, yeah, right. simple. It's everything it, it, we want to um, communicate. And, and we can work towards getting those at for the next go round. Um, I'm I'm just presenting you what was. Yeah, sorry. The way to rent. No, that no, you know, something, <laughs> and, and that's fine. They're I there. Mean, I'm like, oh, that's yeah, great. Well, the the maroon the maroon is fine. Um, we don't have an option, uh, an, uh, um, an argument against that. But at the current time, to con to go back with the, we were a little bit reluctant to come in with the silhouettes at this present time, and unless we gave it a lot more. <laughs> and you're chuckling over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Paul, like oh, 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 where are they going to be hung? Um, right now, once you, this board gives the go ahead, we would have to deal with the municipal light and gas department, Steve. Yes. And then work with them to pick which poles in the downtown area and Albion Street, I would assume, as starting points. Yes, because there's only 50 banners that we're purchasing. Right. So my, so I guess, <laughs> putting the copy for the horse, uh, Steve, with the, <laughs> we're gonna put brand new banners on the light poles that we have. We'll put them on the ones that are good. <laughs> we'll get them. I mean, <laughs> well, we well, gotta, well, we gotta move forward and do something. We'll, Maybe we'll, we'll move them quicker. We'll move them to the new ones when we get them. We're yeah. working <laughs> on that as well, Mr. Chairman, because that is also is dear to my heart, and we've already had meetings with the MGLD on the uh, architectural poles and they keep promising us they will be here they will be here they will be here it it's what but, uh, but again uh, you know they have a lot of work going on in the downtown right now so yeah. um, I, they're working towards that progress I fully believe um, this is just something that we can start Paul can I just ask you a question um, the the design so you're asking about the blue and the white one yes tonight? Do they? I mean, what's the significance of the plants, or the hanging plant, and then flowers and stuff? Is it one springtime and one? No, right now, the 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 notion that was coming up is that we're entering into the, the spring season, the flowering season. Um, there was always a discussion in in many sessions that people suggested putting hanging plants on the poles instead of banners. So we, we what well, we worked in we worked the idea uh. in saying, well, we're not going to put plants on the poles because who's going to water the plants and how would you maintain them and they cause a mess and, mm -hmm. well, again so what we said was well we, there's banners and these are these are already designed banners we just added the wording to them for the time being uh, so I get it. so the the white one it looks like a horizontal mm -hmm. No, the, the, how's that going to fit on a no it, 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 you, if you spin the oh, view it's going to go sideways it, that's right that's exactly right. The wording is, is the wording is the way you see it on. All right, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll flip it back. That's the way you will see it up on the pole. It, it, the words read upward. Let's do the maroon one. Well, uh, the next time, the, the next, the next time. <laughs> well, it's okay. you can listen, buy fifty uh, banners and then take them down. In three work, months? work with three me. Months. This every is, every three, three, three months. Every three months, what we're trying to really? do is put up new 
uh, new banners. So right now, once we put these up and they have the sponsored by signs attached to the bottom, mm -hmm. once they, a couple of businesses see other people's names up there, that money will pay for the new banners that are going to be made. We won't need the brackets. We'll already have yeah, them yeah. paid for. Mm -hmm. All we need is the new banners. So the cost to buy and purchase an additional 50 banners will be short money. And we won't have to incur the cost. I don't want sponsored by signs up there. It'd just be nice. I'd rather pay for them ourselves in the mm -hmm. town. I'll add them to anybody's well, budget well, and I, do this I, thing. Again, right. I didn't so. want to incur any cost yeah, to yeah, the no, town. Yeah, yeah, no, it's an this. admirable objective. But man, uh, this is worthy. This well, is good stuff. It, 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 I, again, that wasn't good job, by the way. Don't thank, get me wrong. Thank so you, you, but it's again, there. this <laughs> is definitely not my intent to pass this on to the taxpayers, Mr. Mayo, and I went back and forth on. Um, it was my job so, to go so out. Steve's fault. Well, I went out and I found a sponsor. I went out and I found a sponsor that would Good job. that wanted to do this, and it didn't cost us a dime to do it. So yeah. I was ready to make the presentation. Um, I'm sorry for the the confusion with the two, but I'll blame Steve. On That's those, my fault too. Put those three on there. Um, Can I ask a question ahead. on the blue one? Mm -hmm. um, are we? I think it's great. I'm not making huge changes, but I had one. Go ahead. The font on Shop Dine and Stroll looks very clunky to me. You would rather next to well, Experience we, we try cursive on them, and it just didn't look right. No, not cursive, but there's so uh, there's you a want to change the font? Fonts. Okay, so okay, so you want to? I soft don't know. I mean, I would be thrilled with that, but it just that's Are you stuck looking out for a softer font? I think so. But that's well, okay. You know what? You can. I don't want to cause any other problems. But that jumped out at me at first, because I, I love the red one. So I thought, oh, I'll go for the red one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, there's five so, votes so, for the red one. Everyone ones. loves the red. <laughs> well, okay. It's it's little, little but you know how long it took me to get these two? <laughs> I'll do what the board wishes. I don't. I, I, and you can keep them because I think it's a great idea too. Right. Uh, um, I thought this was the first step into enhancing the downtown because we really need to make a, a, a change in, on the way when people drive through the way it's perceived. Or bicycle through. Or bicycle through. It mm -hmm. depends upon who you are. That's correct. <laughs> Bicycling and, okay. you know, we are part of that mass walk. All right. Mass in motion. Mass right. in motion. Thank you, right. sir. That's part of the deal. So um, I, I'm, I'm asking that you support the, um, the two presented for the first set of um, seasonal banners. <laughs> well, those are not up for 30 years. No, they won't I, know, I, don't, I don't see many things that go up that come down. Yeah. Well, no, these will come down. <laughs> so, we need, so Paul, we need to make a decision <laughs> which one. Well, no, actually, the order will be the two. They're giving us the option of buying the, the two, 25 of each of the two. Jesus. So you can take the we can order right now the blue one and the white one. Right. Okay. Red ones. About fifty red ones. <laughs> <laughs> How's this? How's this? Oh, I, I, I'll right. compromise. Give it a Seeing shot. that you are in such a giving mood right now, okay. Here's what I'll do. I already have a sponsor for the fifty that I presented plus the brackets. If this board wishes to say, let's pick one of the other maroon ones and purchase an additional fifty. You can do that. <laughs> I don't see that being an, uh, um, anything negative right now, but that would come out of the tax roll, not out of, oh, Steve would have to be. What's the cost? What is it? Uh, the cost, I believe, just for the banners right now would be about maybe 4,500. These, oh. these right now, the, the brackets. The brackets included. Is oh, the that, brackets. The, right. the brackets included the cost the, for the two banners plus the brackets, it's 9227. That is being donated. So that's the brackets being donated as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So right now, if you wanted to purchase, I guess I'm having a hard time. I just and, and I'm I'm not trying to belabor it or torture you. Why can't you go to your banner people and say, make this one, do the maroon one instead? Is, is it because the other ones are prefab? They're pre. I, I could, I but they're in Minnesota, that. so dealing with them over back and forth, getting proof sent. It, it, Ponies it, it, in the mail it, carriers. Well, it takes time. It's no, it, Brian, it, believe it or not, this took, Steve, how long did this take? Long time. A long time, okay? It, it, because everybody had, everybody wanted a little piece of input as far as what they wanted. And then it just, this is my counterpart over here. How long ago did you start the being in the discussion? Four or five years ago? <laughs> okay, oh, so. Get, you asked the question. <laughs> you asked the question, Paul. We had somebody design some banners. Yes. Uh, a local kid. And yes. And I, I don't know what happened to those designs, but 
In fact, it was the librarian's son. That's yes. right. I love the he fact that he did a fantastic that job. Yeah. We were all set to go. I don't know what happened, but yeah. here we sit with a new design. It's whatever. Mm. Right. What can I get? I, 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 uh, I personally, I think Rockets. if I were to choose, I'd choose the maroon ones also. I, I'm not wild about the white and blue one. I'm sorry. That's fine. Uh, I, I like the maroon style better without the silhouettes. Maybe something like Brian said, some kind of symbol. These, these are going to go up. And people are gonna have to look at them, and uh, so it, I mean, you're asking our opinions. Absolutely, I don't, I don't want to tell. I don't want to sit here and say it no, looks great I, when I don't. I, I, I mean, I don't that care, to me, it has to have anything. some kind of weight field. Paul, do we need to make the decision tonight? Uh, it, 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 no one has to make a decision tonight. Absolutely not. Um, what? It, uh, no, a decision does not have to be made tonight. It's the time that's going to be necessary to to go through and changing the. Uh, ban. I'll do whatever the board wants. It, it's not, it, it, trust me. I, I, I want something. I thought I had something that would be appealing and, and pleasing to the public. Um, and that's why I went with the softer, gentler design. Um, silhouettes scared the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ooh. part of my language. Well put. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the music. Point of order. <laughs> part of my language, no, but, but, but after that's that's what happened the last geez. time, I don't I like think this. that's one of the seven words you can't say on television. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> the last hey, time silhouettes. Access, actually, it is. The last silhouettes were not these silhouettes. No, they weren't. No, no, no they weren't. <laughs> and actually, she she actually has. I like these silhouettes. She actually has other silhouettes. I I I can take it, but it's going to take time. And, and the only reason why I'm, I'll do whatever the board wants, because we just received a, a, a grant from the state to help the businesses as well. So I'm trying to tie everything all in th together on that. We just received from the governor a, um, a Massachusetts Downtown Initiative Technical Assistance Grant for $10,000. Okay, so we're going. We're trying to move forward with the enhancement mm -hmm. and the beautification mm -hmm. of the business areas. At, at the people are saying that we're not <coughs> doing anything for. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I can I can take the banners in question um, and work with them to produce um, the um, experience that we were looking for. Um, Well, have they made these banners already? The banners on the bottom are not from uh, the company. I understand that. I'm asking no, they, about... No, no they don't. those banners are not made yet. They're, so we, why, no. why can't we just say, forget about them and do the ones that everybody likes? Because the three banners on the bottom are not theirs. Who's there? Well, there's somebody. Somebody created them in their house and they don't exist. No, someone, no, someone grabbed them off of another signed company's... Perfect. Go yeah. to them and get, do it, no? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, again, um, it, 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 at this point right now, if we're not going to move forward, I would say just to table it. So I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to table it. Motion by Paul. Okay. Second by. <clears throat> well, I'll second it um, for discussion. I, yeah. I, 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 I just must not be thinking clearly. I just don't understand. The other, the top two haven't been audited, and the great majority of this board likes the red ones. Oh no, but, but but not to, so you wouldn't have to make a decision tonight. That's all I'm asking for the, the yeah. table for the no yeah. decision tonight. Right. So in other words, I'll have to go back to the drawing board. I want to make a decision soon and get them up. Yeah, I think yeah. it's great. I just so you know, and the red ones are are, are awesome. I don't just, care what we do tonight about the banners. However, I do not want to. B have banners that the taxpayers have to pay for. No, that, I don't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If we use, if the savings bank will back these maroon things, do it. why don't we just do it? Yeah. Why don't, why don't, why don't I do this? Why don't we check with the that company and other and bring it back next week for a final decision? Yeah. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you okay with us approving the red design? You presented it here as a mm. potential. Let's see the um, final with the better, sorry, and better logos. Like <laughs> well, uh, Comic Sans or right. something. And, 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 and again, so just so that we are, are perfectly clear, my presentation was the two. Steve threw in the last three as options for the future, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, yeah. Steve's fault. Oh. It's Steve's fault. Again, with you. Yeah. 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 He gave us a little, you know, I know. <laughs> a little taste. Gave you too well, much. <laughs> I, 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 and again, my, my intent was to start it mo moving with getting three up for, I mean, two up for three months. 
and then pursue and have additional ones made for another three months, and then another set for another three months. I'm just, I'm happen to be in favor of that. You didn't ask, but doing a set of, I like the shop, eat, stroll, mm -hmm. those three words yes. I think are great. Mm -hmm. Those ought to be like a mantra that we adopt yes. for the downtown and put up really nice ones forever, a year, two, three mm -hmm. years, whatever the numbers. I don't know that you have to change them all the time. I Unless, second the motion to take No, it's not a motion. Oh, it's a table. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> I had second so it. You said second. It should be done. Yeah. Shop Paul made it. Stroll. Paul made it. You yeah. seconded it. Sorry. All in favor. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good job, Paul. Great. Uh, right there. Yeah. That's fine. <coughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> uh, next matter on the agenda. Um, can I get a motion to, dis uh, to approve a discharge of mortgage from Raymond Felitti and Ronald Felitti, trustees of Millbrook Rentals Realty Trust? I would happily do that. Oh. But no, second, second Brian's second. motion. Second. Moved by Brian, second by Betsy. All in Sorry. favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Uh, where are we here? License permits and approvals. There's a, re um, there's a request from the Wakefield Chamber of Commerce for a 30 day liquor license from April 11, 2014 through May 11, 2014 for ordering and acquiring alcohol beverages for Blossoms at the BB to be held at the Lucius BB Memorial Library on April 26, 2014 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. So moved. Second Moved by Betsy, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. There's a request from uh, Joyce Patch of St. Florence Parish for a one-day liquor license for St. Florence's annual St. Patrick's Dinner and Dance to be held in the church hall on March 22nd, 2014, from 6 p.m. until 11 p.m. So moved. Second. Moved by Paul. Second by Betsy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Request from William Zink for a common victory license for 61 New Salem Street Diner. Um, this was the previous location for the Chuck Wagon Diner. Oh, okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Betsy. Second by Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. The request from... Jerong Mo for a class two license for Wakefield Motor, Motor Gallery Inc. 506 Main Street. Uh, and this was previously known as Wakefield Motors Inc. Um, fingerprinting and background check have been done. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's it's passed, correct? Yeah. Yep. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Betsy. Second. Second by yeah. Pat. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? You know? Yes. Thank yes. you. Comments? Tom? Nothing, thanks. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, I'm all, uh, you noticed tonight was our first night on the um, tablets. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us, uh, let us know. We're trying to be as paperless as we can here. And um, I think as we get used to them, we'll, we'll do much better. But I think it worked pretty good for the first time. We probably saved three or four reams of paper. And uh, Sherry deserves all the credit for pulling that off. So thank you. So no, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Paul? Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, briefly go back to the um, Massachusetts Downtown Initiative Grant that we received. Um, just to give you a few highlights as to what it's going to provide for us with, with the $10,000. Um, the program includes a best retail practice workshop. Um, it's presented to food, retail, and service-related businesses uh, within Wakefield. The shop will provide uh, professional advice to independent retailers in the areas of the store and restaurant design, interior improvement ideas, layout and visual merchandising, customer service, both traditional and social media marketing. Um, business owners would be uh, benefit this uh, through the expertise of um, uh, learning how to do it yourself to make the proper changes to the businesses. Um, again, it was a, it's a $10,000 grant um, with uh, two phases, uh, $2,000 in the first phase and $8,000 in the second. It's um, to the credit of the um, Economic Development Committee, Mr. Rivas and Mr. Mayo, as to uh, obtaining this grant, and um, hopefully it will do us some good for the downtown businesses. Other than that, um, the St. Patrick's Day event is March 23rd, 9.30 to 1.30 at the West Side Social Club. Tickets are on sale. Hopefully we'll have um, a, a great time there, especially with our two MCs, which I'm announcing tonight. One MC will be our own Betsy Sharon, mm -hmm. and the other is 
uh, Gerard Lehman. So between the two of them, they will be emceeing the, uh, the Jess Fest portion of the brunch. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be a, a, a very interesting afternoon, <laughs> to say the least. Other than that, um, I am done. Thank you, Pat. That's it. Uh, yes, I'd like everyone to please remember the food pantry, and also I'd like to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. That's it. Right. Um, just public forum, Steve, are we all set? On all the, set. The garage public forum scheduled 24th at what time? Uh, 7 p.m. at the Savings Bank Theater right, in the high school. school. Okay, so we're all set on that. That's yep. booked. Um, WCAT, are you going to cover that? All right, that's great. Um, and we did speak to the chairman. That will ne necessitate our meeting to be moved to the 26th. Okay. Why is it the 26th? Um, uh, that's going to be really important. I just see a lot of um, yeah. misinformation flowing around out there and confusion over the facts of the deal. So just another opportunity to, to, to lay out the truth um, unfettered and, uh, and help help people make the right decision on April 1st. So, um, seven? Seven. Seven. Yep. Picked? Yeah, seven. Yeah. Yep. So, um, further to that, I think uh, just something I, I wanted to bring up um, is this entire board uh, voted in favor uh, of the parking garage of that whole project. Um, I, I'll I'll do the work on this, but I, I'd like to um, uh, perhaps just draft a letter of support uh, just to make it clear that this board does support uh, that uh, that development in downtown Wakefield. Um, and have it be signed by the entire board of selectmen if that's okay uh, i think i don't know what the right process is in that you guys tell me i think i, just I would bring like it. to make a motion that we um authorize uh mr falvey to uh draft a letter uh, that would be supported by the board okay second second by <laughs> moved by betsy second by Ian. all in favor uh, 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 unanimous and, and as a matter of procedure i'll i'll draft something i'll send it to everybody and then comment back uh, individually if you have any edits just uh, to stay clear on the open meeting law so proper okay and then we'll have it ready for the next meeting okay motion to adjourn moved by betsy second by paul all in favor Aye. unanimous